All right, thank you so much for coming back. You know, it's kind of like going, 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 this kind of thing. So thank you so much for joining us again. Um, as I said, in this video, we are going to talk about initial value problem. I think I explained this um, when I was talking about solution in the previous video, which we talked about general solution and particular solution. And we said, um, a general solution can be sine x plus c and particular solution will be equal to let's say sine x plus six so moving from the general solution to the particular solution is basically what we will need like we will need something to help us do that and the thing that we need is the initial value problem so anytime initial value problem is given to us it will help us to not and our solution to general solution but also proceed to a particular solution for example i can solve and get this but with initial value problem this will help me to move from this to that yes so basically that is what we are talking about so we said if we want to find a solution to a differential equation that satisfy a certain prescribed condition called the initial value initial condition then the first order differential equation together with the initial condition this is needed so it means that for us to move from this to this then the initial value condition is needed so we wrote something here y of x naught is equal to a naught now what do we mean here now anytime you see something like this now y is equal to a naught so the y here is equal to this right and then x is equal to what is inside the bracket here so x not the idea is like kind of if you have let's say f of x is equal to y you remember the idea we said whenever you are finding um inverse is that let f of x is equal to y so if that's the case when you compare this to this you see that y is equal to this and then x is equal to what's inside here like instead of doing it f we are making it y so basically that's the idea so when and whenever you see this the one here is your y and the one inside the bracket here is your x we will take example and then we learn we are going to learn so we are going to take example where we are going to apply the initial value problem or the initial condition to so now let's take this example so find the particular solution of the initial value problem this and that if the general solution is given now one thing that you need to learn from here is that for us to move from for us to get um, a particular solution what do we need we need a general solution so sometimes you will see a lot of equation and you'll be confused for us to move from general solution for us to get particular solution we need to move from general solution so you see that we have one equation here and we have another equation here but the question is which one do we need to use we need to use the general solution which is this and we know that general solution should contain a constant and we can see that the constant is here which is c so this is the original equation that they solved and then we had this it means that this is the equation that when we differentiate we are going to get this so now let's write our general solution what is the general solution general solution is y is equal to 1 plus 2x plus c e to the power 2x and we need to use this general solution to get our particular solution now for us to get a particular solution we need to use the initial value problem what is this here so the initial value problem is y of zero is equal to five we just learned that this means that y is equal to five right and then s is equal to zero so y is equal to what is here and x is equal to what is inside the bracket so we just need to do substitution to find c so i look at my general solution wherever i see y i put Five there wherever i see x i put zero there so let's go so from here we are going to have five is equal to one plus one plus two times zero plus c e to the power two times zero so what are we going to get from here we are going to have five is equal to one plus zero 
plus c e to the power zero, five plus one, five is equal to one plus this. So, so e to the power zero is one, so plus c times one. And then I move the one to the left, so five minus one is equal to c, and c will be equal to four. So now that initial condition has helped us to find the constant c, now when I plug in c is equal to four inside this general solution, now it is not general solution again, it becomes what a particular solution. So now I'll say I'll write this one as particular solution. Particular solution. Particular solution. So with this one, I'm going to write this one as um y is equal to y is equal to what is the question? Y is equal to one plus two x plus so now c is four so four e to the power two x so you see that this one is not involving it does not involve unknown constant right now the constant is no so i just place the four here and this is my particular solution so basically that is the idea of finding a particular solution the process Let's take one or two examples and I'll give you a try one to go through, right? So same thing again. Now, find the general solution. Okay, so this one is find the general and particular solution. So here, what we need to know is here, we don't have the general solution. So here, if you think of putting this one here, you will see that it's, it's not even going to work because from y of zero to two here, it implies that y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 0. When you pick the equation that is there, which is y prime is equal to this, you see that we have x, but we don't have y prime. So you cannot say you are putting 2 prime here. No. This is the y over the x, not y to the power 1. No. So that's the reason why the question is saying that we should find the general solution. But what you, we need to also know is the question can be silent. The question can say, find the particular solution, given this and the initial condition. It means that for us to get the particular solution, we need the general solution first. So since general solution is not given to us, then even if the general solution is silence, still we need to find the general solution first. So in this video, or in this question, I'm going to show you how to find general solution if it is not given to you like this. So let's do this. Okay. So I'll change the um, y prime to dy over dx, which is equal to ex. So what am I going to do? I'll group the items, right? So I'll multiply this x to this. So I'm going to have dy is equal to ex dx. So I'll talk about this a lot, like in, let's say, two or three video. Now you see that every term here is y, and every term here is x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides. So that's why I said here your differentiation and your integration should be very, very good. So now when I differentiate dy, dy means that the function has been what? Differentiated. So for me to get the function, I need to integrate. So like kind of derivative, antiderivative. So it means that the d will cancel the integration and I'm just going to have y. So it means that if the function has been differentiated, then when I integrate, I come back to where the function is. So that's basically what we are, we are going to get. Then when I differentiate e to the power, when I integrate e to the power x, I maintain the function and then I divide it by the derivative of the top. So you saw that with differentiation, I multiply it by the, the derivative of the top, but this one I'm dividing. So when I differentiate x, I got 1 plus a constant remember this is indefinite so i need to add a constant to it so this is now y is equal to e x plus c and this is the general solution this is the general solution that we have so now with this general solution we can use the initial condition given to us to find the c and then when we are done now we can think of writing the particular solution. So the question was asking us to find the general solution. 
So this is our general solution. Let's try and find particular solution. So we are giving 0, 2, right? Good. And we know that this implies that y is equal to 2 and x is equal to 0. So let's go. y is 2. So from here, from general solution, y is 2, x is 0 plus c. This is 2 plus 2 is equal to 1 plus c. And c should be 2 minus 1. And c is equal to 1. So now I can write, from the general solution, I can write it as y is equal to e x plus c is 1. And this is my particular solution. Very simple, right? So basically, that's how we are going to learn. Don't worry. We are going to do more videos. And the more we are doing it, you are going to grab it. But I hope you are able to understand the way we are going through the process, right? So give me, um, you know, write comments if you don't understand the way I explain some of the things or you need some things that I need to, you know, add, you know, to my explanation and those things so that I can implement them in my explanation. Right. So that is how we find general solution and particular solution. Good. Now, I want you to also try this. So what I want you to do is it's the same as like what you've done here right so change your okay this one is already in dy over the x which is here right so multiply the dx to the right so multiply this one by this and do the integration so i hope you know how to do the integration and go through the same process when you are done finding the general solution use the initial condition to find the particular solution and please drop your final result in the comment section you know, we are all learning. So at least I will know that you are with me. You are watching. You are, you know, listening to what I'm doing. All right. So in the next video, guess what we are going to do? In the next video, we are going to talk about, you know, first order differential equation. And with first order differential equation, the one that we just did here, you will see that we are going to give it a name. We call it, let me give you a hint. We call it separable differential equation. We are going to do a lot in the next video. And that is where we are going to dive in with a lot of differentiation and a lot of what integration and a lot of stuff that we need to learn. All right. So see you in the next video.